The government had replaced the entire board of the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation and, uh, uh, and uh, also suspending the chief executive over governance problems. The state-run nuclear firm is mandated to undertake and promote research and development in the field of nuclear energy and radiation sciences and technology. It was due to be involved in the procurement of more nuclear energy after a plan was championed by former President Jacob Zuma. But that, of course, was halted in the court last year. To discuss, we're joined by the Deputy Minister of Energy, Tembisile Majola. Uh, Deputy Minister, thank you for being with us. It all sounds very alarming. The Minister saying that several board members showed ineptitude, uh, deliberate acts of defiance. What exactly happened here? Good evening uh, to you and the, and the listeners. Um, you are aware that on the 17th of November 2017, there was an incident at the NTP, which is the one that produces our medical isotopes. And this was supposedly a minor incident, which means it should have, once after the regulator had shut it down, it could have been back in operation within four to six weeks. But instead, the immediate decision by NEXA was to suspend the top uh, leadership, bring other people in who are very experienced people, but they didn't know the plant. So they started production. Then there was another even more serious incident uh, the following year, I think earlier in the year. So by around June, we began to get really concerned because this does not only impact on NTP and NEXA, which is the holding company, or the Department of Energy, but actually we produce medical isotopes for South Africa and globally, which were being exported to about 60 countries on a daily basis for the treatment of cancer. Minister, can I just understand, are you suggesting that the, the board or, or NEXA and its board uh, basically sabotage the subsidiary, which is NTP, uh, producing those medical isotopes? And why would they do that? I am not suggesting that they sabotaged it. What I'm saying is that they were not able to get it back online and all the questions and the meetings we had with them, instead of addressing the core issues of what was happening, they were busy with other issues, suspensions and uh, uh, of the top management and having disciplinary processes instead of focusing on getting production back. Minister and I had a number of meetings with them. We looked at the issues, for instance, the finances and how that's being managed. As we speak now, the 2017-2018 financials have not been finalized. Minister had expressly said to them, we are not able to be going ahead with an agreement or an MOU with, with the Russians on isotopes because we already have an agreement with Australians and there are IP issues around that. Mm. And they still went against those express issues. So we so then decided that we actually need to get this on board and to get NTP to produce. And Minister took a decision in July that NTP would report directly to us and I'm happy to say as from the 17th of November this year, they are back online with the regulator watching and making sure that there's full compliance. All right. Uh, you still have, have gotten rid of the, the whole board. Yes. Uh, they were opposing that, I understand. They didn't believe that uh, NTP officials could report directly to you or, or the minister. Is government allowed to summarily uh, fire an, an entire board? I understand there was legal pushback already before today. It, uh, it is not the board that has done that. Minister had a meeting with the board. I was there where these issues were raised and we said we'll give each one of them an opportunity formally, write to them and say these are the issues. Why should this board not be dissolved because it has not been able to carry out its fiduciary duties? Those letters were sent out, members responded, and a number of members even said we accept the, the issues that have been raised and we are ready to resign. It's only two board members and the CEO who decided they would challenge that decision and they, would, they actually decided they are going to take a legal route. So it was not the board. It was certain members. All right, so that's still playing out in the courts. So you, you expect an ongoing legal battle? We are expecting 
think we'll, we'll see how that is happening because what was we are also concerned about is who is carrying these costs, how is it done, because the transgressions that were there are actually uh, sufficient to summarily dismiss uh, the CEO in, in effect, but we decided we want to go through due process, so that's why we had the precautionary suspension, so that the incoming board can then manage that in a procedural manner. Uh, Deputy Minister, a DA official has released a statement saying the following. The minister needs to answer whether there is a deal with a foreign company involving NTP, the subsidiary you're talking about, uh, from which the minister stands to financially benefit or from which he has already benefited. I'm not sure why they're saying that. It sounds like a, a claim of, of possible corruption. Well, the um, minister was asked that question, and the NTP itself has been present. Nobody knows about this deal. We don't know where it comes from. There has been no agreement signed with, everybody, uh, with anybody. So until they can actually put something on the table, we actually have no idea what they're yeah. talking about. Uh, so, so it couldn't be linked to what you were talking about, this deal with Russia that could have been scuppered, and then there was an effort to make sure that that went ahead somehow? No, we actually stopped that deal, so it, that uh, MOU, it wasn't even, a, from my understanding, it was an MOU. We stopped it because what we needed to do is get our entity back on its feet, not to be looking for other uh, partners or members to come on board. So there's been no agreement, we have no intention of doing anything now. We want NTP back online because the global and domestic market has really been crying out for medical isotope for the treatment of, uh, of cancer. Is any of this at all linked to the previously mooted uh, massive nuclear deal? Which, what is linked to what? Because I don't even know the one that the DA is talking about, so I, it's very yeah. difficult for me to No, no, yeah. Deputy Minister, this is a completely separate issue. Okay. So move away from the corruption. I'm okay. saying it is being reported that there, there are prominent backers on this board. They backed uh, former President Jacob Zuma uh, when he lobbied for that nuclear deal, which we know was then shelved last year because of the courts. I actually wouldn't know. The only interest we had was about making sure that they carry out their responsibilities to make sure that there is financial stability, there is gov good governance at Nexa and the subsidiaries. What they do after work, which is not related to Nexa, I really would not know. Yeah, there, there was a nuclear deal planned, Deputy Minister. Do, do you agree? Uh, it was to be headed by ESCOM, but Nexa was to be involved as well. Can you explain how they would have been involved if we had acquired oh, more nuclear energy? Been, Nexa would have been involved as the one that currently has a license, so it was as an entity. That's what I'm saying. I'm not sure how specifically, because if you remember, the, the court, uh, the decision that had been taken is that the Department of Energy as a department would not be able to implement that. It would need a NEXA which has a license in terms of nuclear. So that's what had happened. But as you know, that was stopped by the court and that's where it ended. It was not challenged. So nothing further from the department has, has, mm. has gone ahead with that. So, so let me make it explicit. This isn't political at all in that these were backers of the former president and the, the current president uh, opposed the nuclear deal. Absolutely not. This is about good governance and good financial management of an institution, a very valuable institution that does cutting edge research in South Africa and for global and production of medical isotopes which had been out of production for a full year, which means NTP was actually surviving on savings as it was not mm -hmm. able to be profitable. So what you've suggested, uh, Deputy Minister, is that an entire board is incompetent. So how were the members chosen in the first place and when? If you, if you remember, at the beginning of August, we advertised for people to apply for all the boards which are under the Department of Energy. If you can go to those weekend papers, you'll find those adverts. So we got close to 300 applications, and it was from that list that we then started looking and making sure that 
We are looking for a board that's got all the competences in terms of audit, financial skills, legal, corporate governance, and the technical skills. That was the basis on which they were chosen. All right, so, so they were chosen badly. Sorry? Were they chosen badly? I mean, I mean it sounds like they, they all oh, should have been... Are you talking of the current or the previous board? I, I'm talking I'm about the previous board. Oh, the previous board. Minister, yeah. uh, the previous board, uh, I, unfortunately, I really do not have the details. They, they, were, brought, uh, they were brought in during Minister Tina's uh, um, tenure, and I had not been involved, so I really would not be able to tell you exactly the process that was followed. But I was, the one I was talking about is this board that has just been mm. um, approved by all cabinet. All right, but, uh, Deputy Minister, let's end it there. Uh, so the new board headed by Rob Adam, who was once a, a CEO of Nexus, so you have full faith in this new board? have absolute full faith in them. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was the Deputy Minister of Energy, uh, Tembisile Majola. Shantae?